Hey guys, Matt Thurtell here from Entrack. It's been a while since our last video about using the step sequencer in Entrack Studio, and there have been a whole host of updates that we think you'll find useful. So in this video, we'll walk through them. We're going to use the iOS version of Entrack, though the principles are the same on Android, Mac, and Windows too. Let's click on the Create a Beat icon from the Start screen to get into the Step Sequencer. We can also click on the Add Channel icon and select Add Beat Track. Once selected, we'll get into the Step Sequencer view. Let's add some steps to create a pattern. We'll start with a kick on the first step and a snare on step five. Let's also add a closed hi-hat every two steps. We can hear that there's already a groove going on. We can now add some swing to our beat. Let's start by adding a snare fill on the last step and a closed hi-hat on step two. Then we'll click on the swing icon in the top right corner and adjust the fader to change the amount of swing. Notice how the feel of the groove changes as we increase the swing percentage. Okay, that's sounding good to me. We'll click outside the box to return to the step sequencer. We can adjust the velocity of a specific step by long pressing on the step and moving the velocity bar down and up. Or if we want to change the volume for all the steps on a specific sound, like the closed hi-hat, we can move the step row volume knob like so. We can add effects directly to our step sequencer part by clicking on the effects button. We'll select the plus button on the left hand side of the effects shell and navigate to the effect that we want to use. Let's start by adding a tube distortion to our part. Let's also add the end track reverb and move the orb to the bright room preset. We can also change the sound of the drum kit by clicking on the instrument box and selecting a drum kit. The default is acoustic kit. Let's try our pattern with an electronic kit. We can also use one of the drum essentials kits from our instruments library. If you haven't already, make sure you check out the available sound packs from the add-on manager and download the ones that match your musical taste so that you can expand your music making palette. At the moment, our pattern is eight steps long. We have four steps to one beat, so our pattern is only two beats long. Let's change our step length from eight to 16. Simply tap on any of the greyed out steps to the right of the currently enabled steps. We can see that the beats three and four are now silent and can be filled in however we like. If we want to change other settings of the pattern besides the length, we can click the settings icon. From here, we can modify a variety of options. We can modify scale, the step length to one eighth, one sixteenth and other subdivisions and you can even change the feel of the steps, including some pretty out there settings like quintuplet or even a nine tuplet feel. So definitely experiment and have a play with those. Let's return back to eight steps for our example in this video. And take our swing fader back to 0%. So we can talk about the humanize function. The idea of humanization is to take a beat that is played perfectly by a machine and to deliberately add timing imperfections to make it sound more human and natural. Let's hear what humanization does to our groove. By sliding the fader and increasing the value and doesn't sound as perfect as before. Making the value too high can impair the beat or be used as a creative effect depending on your viewpoint. In this example, I think that a value between 20 and 30 ticks 
is a nice band. Returning to the step sequencer view, Entrack now lets you adjust the position and length of an individual step. Let's delay this step a bit. Long press on the step and slide horizontally to adjust the offset, that is, the position relative to where it would normally be. After we long press on a step, we enter the step editing mode. The steps show a circle on its right side and we can drag the circle to change the length of the step. Click on any other step to exit the step editing mode. We can also add multiple step sequencer patterns and arrange them to form longer, more intricate patterns. This is so we don't always have to cycle through the same pattern, which could get a bit dull, particularly if repeated throughout an entire song. We can click on the Add Pattern button to create a blank step sequencer track, which we could fill with a new beat. And then, by clicking on the Pattern Editor button, we can choose how we want Entrack Studio to play back our patterns. With Free Run selected, Entrack will repeat the selected pattern continuously. We can see this in the main window with our step sequencer pattern repeated many times. If we change our pattern number, we can see that the color of the step sequencer part has been updated in the Entrack main window, meaning that another pattern has been selected to free run. By clicking the playlist option, we can create a custom pattern order to our liking from the patterns that we have created and Entrack will play back the exact order that we have created. We can see in the main Entrack timeline that the exact playlist order and length are displayed and played back in the step sequencer part. And if we want to loop a step sequencer part, we can do that in the timeline by selecting a section to loop and enabling the loop timeline selection icon. We can hear that the selection now plays back repeated as a looped section. You can now edit a step sequence apart on the arrange window like a piano roll track. For example, you can long press and splice sections, you can remove parts, loop parts, length adjust, and even use the transpose widget. If we add a drum pattern MIDI loop from the loop browser, it will automatically import as a step sequencer track. Once imported, all of the functions we have discussed can be applied to the loop. A creative and interesting way to use the step sequencer is with melodic loops. If we choose an Entrack Keys loop, for example, Electric Piano Chords 4, and import it, the default view will not be as a step sequencer track, but as a MIDI piano roll track. This makes sense in general because MIDI editing can get more specific and intricate, but if we long press on the instrument track, we can click the Export Step Sequencer Pattern option, which will duplicate it to a step sequencer track. From there, we can take advantage of the step sequencer features to make editing loopable parts very effective. We'd love to know if you have questions on the step sequencer updates, so please let us know in the comments section. We'd also love to keep this channel growing, so please like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when our next video is out. Until next time, have fun making music with Entrag. Cheers.